My name is Dr. Jessica Lindsay and I'm the Assistant Professor of Clarinet here at UNC Charlotte. Today I'm going to talk about a few parts of Rose Etude number 16 from the David Height edition of the 32 Rose Etudes. This etude really allows clarinet players to work on rhythm, articulation, and musical expression while maintaining a beautiful tone quality and accurate intonation. The embouchure that I like to use is uh, making a whistle face embouchure. So it looks like this. It gives us the best sound because it brings our side corners forward and engages our top lip and chin muscles in moving down. When we raise the back of our tongue to make a cat hiss sound like this, and combine that with the whistle face embouchure, that makes the coolest and fastest air and makes for a great clarinet sound. It looks and sounds like that. The first step in working on this etude is to determine your tempo. You will have a different practice tempo and a different performance tempo. In both instances, one should look at measure three at the 30 second notes because they are the fastest notes in this music. Here they are. When you find the tempo at which you can play the fastest notes with the greatest accuracy and most thoughtful musicality, then you apply that tempo to the rest of the etude. These etudes are meant to be slow and lyrical and we cannot change our tempo when the fast notes come upon us in performance. So for these, I like to use the words three e and a andy and a four e and a andy and a for those 30 second notes. That really helps me get it in my ear. David Height, as the editor, suggests about 50 beats per minute um, to the quarter note for this etude. There's a really beautiful little cadenza here in measure eight. I like to use note groupings instead of a, a rapid increase of tempo to pace myself through this short cadenza. So I use two groups of two, and I think the word tar heels for that. I use one group of three using the initials, the airport initials CLT, and then Carolina for the fours, and I use that three times, and then follow the yellow brook for the sextuplet, and then the road becomes the high D um, that where we resume our tempo at measure three, uh, excuse me, beat three of measure eight. So if we started on the C sharp, in our mind we could think Tar Heel, Tar Heel, CLT, Carolina, 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 follow the yellow brick road, bum ba -dee, da dum ba dum And that brings us to the end of measure nine. In measure 20, there is a turn that we can write out using a very specific rhythm. This is beat two of measure 20 with our pretty standard 16th note that we're all used to. And then there's a turn written in the music and I think that it should be realized in this way. Bum, ba, da, da, dee, dum, bum. So we make the part of the turn um, into a 30 second note triplet. And we also use a B natural, which is not written in your music but it is understood for performance practice of this etude. If you follow this rhythm, you'll come right out of that turn right in time as it's, as it's suggested in the music and written with that turn sign. One last reminder, in concert music, our trills are less fast and furious and a lot more artistic. So alternating notes slower at the beginning of the trill and then faster at the end of the trill in measures five, in measure 17, and in measure 29, really makes for a beautiful artistic approach to the piece and adds a lot to the performance. Thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, my name is Dr. Jessica Lindsay and I am the Assistant Professor of Clarinet here at UNC Charlotte. Happy practicing.